Um, you know, uh, thanks, Gabe, for inviting me to speak today uh, on this panel. I'm excited about this topic and, in fact, all the topics that we had today. Uh, really, you know, we're talking about uh, data, and the future of data technology hinges on uh, turning big data into smart data. And there's a number of obstacles to doing this. Uh, there's a shortage of talent who can correctly analyze and interpret this data. There are uh, lots of companies who are built on traditional models that are siloed inside of those organizations. And a lot of that can really obstruct data-centric changes. And so today, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, data and uh, an initiative that our two guests uh, have been working on together. And hopefully, uh, they can also give some insights into what it takes to uh, make a company uh, data-focused. So. Uh, first, I'll introduce, in no specific order, Natan, who's the Corporate Vice President uh, of Brand and Strategy at New York Life. Um, he's been there for quite some time, but he also has an extensive uh, background uh, in the business, um, working at Mediacom, Universal McCann, and uh, uh, also Oleg Kornfeld, who is the Executive Vice President at MediaVest. Uh, he heads up their advertising technology uh, initiatives there. So thanks, guys, for, for doing this. Well, thanks for having us. Yep. So um, I know the two of you are working together on uh, a number of initiatives. Do you want to start by just giving a little overview of, of your work together and what it is you're doing uh, with respect to the data project? Yeah, abso absolutely. And again, uh, you know, Gabe told us, he said, listen, 4 o'clock, people are going to be tired. Uh, let's get them excited. Let's talk about life insurance. I think it's like, <laughs> something that really will, I think, pique everybody's interest. Um, but now we've been, uh, you know, pivoting as a as a company in New York Life uh, since I got there about three years ago, and even before my time, to try to take a, a brand and a company that's uh, over 170 years old, uh, and really try to um, understand and try to really dive deep into the data that we have. Uh, we happen to be a company with a lot of rich data. People tell us right a lot of things when they fill out their applications and they work with agents. They share a lot of information. Um, and we're a heavy regulated industry, and I think we talked before about, we'll probably get into sort of some of that, you know, PII and compliance issues and things like that. But really to be able to start on that journey, it became very obvious um, as we engaged with MediaVest um, and a number of other agencies at the, at the beginning of the year um, that a DMP um, as sort of the spine to that conversation was gonna be really necessary. And so um, we've embarked with the help of, of Oleg and his team at MediaVest Spark to be able to really push that envelope and really be able to, 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 to get a DMP in-house, but really a DMP as a, I guess, a harbinger of, of what's to come and what we want to do from a, a data perspective, and, and the team has been phenomenal with that. Thanks. Um, as, as an agency over the last year and a half or so, we've seen a lot of demand, and uh, demand in the sense of um, questions, uh, of what should uh, marketers do with the data that they have, or where should they go to get the data that they need to better inform their more automated, programmatic buying, and we felt it was it was important as for us as an agency who is also evolving and looking what services we should be offering to our clients to launch the whole kind of data architecture uh, team to offer these kind of services back to our clients, where it's basically becoming data consulting um, uh, team that is helping through kind of this whole audience journey and understanding what are the needs, um, what if there is a need for a DMP, what kind of DMP that would need. How would we onboard it? How would we work with, uh, with the client to organize everybody inside the organization to get the right people at the table to actually launch one? Interesting. So how do companies overcome the hurdles of trying to figure out who to choose? What, 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 when, when trying to a, a pick a technology to adopt uh, or to bet on for their data strategy, what, what are the processes you go through for selecting the right data partner? I think the, you know, the, the first thing you have to do you know, before you can get to the partner is you have to be able to work across your own organization to understand sort of what the needs are, right? You have to be able to, to understand what the goals are. And I think we, it was very interesting. We started um, this conversation around you know, media buying, an audience buying, an audience targeting, and being able to, to figure out how to use some of that targeting information uh, to really go into market. And it quickly evolved into, uh, well, uh, uh, you know, being a 170-year-old company, sometimes you don't move so fast, but it quickly evolved into a you know, six-month process um, that involved over 40 stakeholders, because as we kept talking to other people around the organization, 
you could start to tap into some of the benefits, right, that they could start to see and you're talking them through this. And I think that's, it's really important before you go set that partner or go out, it, it, it's important not just for yourself as an organization, but for the partner as well. What, what are they responding to, right? You need to be able to set that vision for them to be able to then say, yeah, we can deliver that, or we can deliver part of that now, and here's what the journey looks like, and that's really what we're on, right? We're on a, we're on a, we're on a journey to be able to, um, you know, utilize the data that we have and have it show up first in some of the lower hanging fruits, media buying and those kind of places, um, but really take us much further and, and, and eventually get us back to where it can impact the entire business as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. Every time we start this process uh, for, our, our, for a client, we don't even, we don't know where we're gonna end up with which platform we're gonna end up. There's, there's a handful of great DMPs out there in the marketplace right now. Some of them were on the panel ju just before us. And um, they all offer a lot of gr great tools, but not until we go through what the needs are and who are the stakeholders and what kind of use cases, whether it's something immediate like media activation or something more longer term, uh, something more internal for internal use or for site personalization, whatever it may be, we may not know who we're gonna end up or what other tools the company already may have that may play along better with one tool or the other. So it, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's an interesting journey where you start and you never end up in the same place. It's, it's hard, I mean, I, it's funny, I think JSP talked about before, you know, sort of, you know, a little chagrin about like, so how fast, um, you know, things are moving. It, it, was, it was funny for me actually at, the, at, at a, a Crux event earlier in, in the year that I attended to see how many people were adopting this, you know, hadn't been doing it for years. We're really doing it in the last three months, six months in terms of, of DMP conversations. I, I think a lot of people within organizations, if they're similar to, to mine in the financial services category, other categories, they're trying. They're trying to figure out how to make it work. They're trying to figure out how to get over those hurdles. Listen, I've been itching, right, to, to guy. I know I'm, it, the, there's no worse feeling than knowing you're wasting money, right? Like there's no worse feeling than knowing that you're, you're sitting there and you're wasting money and you want to spend it better, but, but knowing that there's a long-term goal, right? That there's, that, that's the short-term, if you really go hard, go right away, you may solve some short-term, uh, but you may put yourself in a position long-term to not be able to continue that and sustain that. And I think that's, it's really important to acknowledge that um, as you go into what, it's not just the short-term vision, it's really what those long-term goals are. Also it's important to set uh, almost like expectations early on, what to expect six months into it, 12 months into it, because uh, it could be, during the sales process, you'll hear a lot of amazing things, that technically a lot of things are possible, but the reality of activation becomes you know, very clear six months into the activation of the platform. So um, the, the great thing about doing a bunch of those evaluations is we can o often kind of predict of what kind of questions will end up happening six months from now. So uh, as we go through evaluations, make sure that we set expectations, not only for the marketing team within, within uh, the, the client, but also other groups, uh, the, the 40 or so people that are around the table that Tan mentioned before, that will also be involved and also signed off on this within yeah. the organization and are expecting certain things to get out of this thing. Yeah, my advice is don't do it with 40 people. Don't <laughs> just, you know, keep, keep it contained, but some organizations, it really is like that. And I think that's, you know, wanted to provide, you know, I don't know, sort of the makeup of, you know, this is like a Dodgers game, I think everyone left in the seventh inning, but um, it, it's, it's figuring the makeup of the audience out here, but just pr provide that perspective, to know that, you know, brands are trying, um, and there are a lot of probably, you know, one or two individuals trying to push in, inside an organization, and sometimes it, it's a lot of pushing um, that are involved in, in really trying to make these things happen, and try to, try to really turn the ship uh, a little bit. Well, that's interesting. So, so inside of a company to try to foster these cross-functional collaborations amongst these different groups, each of which have probably different priorities or different wants for the data or different focuses and reasons for implementing data, um, what, what systems should these companies put in place to help this cross-functional uh, buy-in and help this cross-functional usage of the data? Should they invest in people? Should they, they have a, a chief data officer? What, what, what are your thoughts? So, uh, I mean, it's, it's interesting kind of what we went through with Nathan, and Nathan obviously was great kind of uh, uh, leading that whole concept throughout his own organization. But finding those low-hanging fruits and kind of saying this thing will pay for itself if we just get these little things out of the way because the opportunity uh, to do more further down the road, whether it's website personalization, whether it's getting something in the hands of the agents actually that is driven by the data that is aggregating because the opportunities are amazing. But like I said, you need to set expectations on what kind of quick wins we can get 
And because we're a media agency, obviously we're biased towards yeah. uh, using the platform to, to, make, uh, to, to make our buys more efficient. Uh, that seems like a good place to start. Yep, it's interesting. So, so there's a popular belief, though, that inside of uh, you know, the tech uh, world, that if you implement a data technology, it becomes somewhat self-reporting. Um, so you, it's this magic pill uh, that's out there. So uh, what are some of the common uh, misconceptions or things that people ignore, obstacles that are out there with respect to becoming data centric? There's no easy button. Yeah. I think that's Staples. just like with programmatic activation. I think with uh, data management, we, it's the same kind of concept yeah. where you still need to know how to operate this thing. You can, I, I used this cheesy analogy before, but you can buy an expensive car. If you don't know how to drive it, it's a waste of a very expensive car. So um, being able to um, understand what you can get out of it quickly is, 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 imp is important. Yeah, I think uh, to echo, I think what Oleg is saying, I think it's, you know, Oleg likes to use the phrase, you know, programmatic, not automatic. Um, it's the same thing here, which people believe the misconception is that you have all the conversations, you do all the work, you get the fancy toy, and then it's just gonna happen, right? The tech actually does the work for you. It, and, and that's, I mean, honestly, that's the stage as a company that we're going through now, which is great, we had the conversations, we, we got it sold through that, we need this thing, right? But now how do you get people to realize that you don't just need the thing, you actually then need the people to then work the thing, and you need to build the ecosystem to do that, and I think it's, it's making sure that when you have those original conversations, you're not doing it in piece parts. You're trying to share the vision as much as possible to be able to then deliver on the vision in pieces over time, but, but never that it, you, people feel like you, know, you pulled the wool over their eyes. You said, hey, I, I thought all you wanted was this DMP, or all you wanted was this you know, other part of your tech stack or relationship um, from, the, from the buying side or whatever it may be. You, know, you have to paint the whole ecosystem and talk about, okay, now we're gonna focus here uh, and really hammer that home because the people that are not in it, and, and I think a couple of people talked about it before, Natalie talked about it, I mean, senior management, they have discussions across the business all the time, and this is not where they're focusing the attention. So you've got to keep, keep hammering it every time and have sort of, what are your one, two, three points that you go back to um, every single time? Yeah, it's a cultural issue. I mean, inside of an organization that's 170 years old, uh, <coughs> you know, you have people who are, you know, probably a little concerned, wait, wait a second, you're changing the way I've always done things, and uh, you know, I, I know the data says this, but my professional bias says that. So, so you know, wh what steps do you put in place to ensure that uh, you're, you're actually uh, implementing this big data correctly, this initiatives correctly, and, and that people are embracing it as part of a new culture and not seeing it as uh, uh, job killing. That, that was, I think, the, I would say the, the, the core of one of our challenges. I mean, the, the first thing you do is you get a really good partner, right, to help you um, explain it. I'll be honest, my, my own personal education from where I started, I mean, listen, I'd, I'd been in the, um, on the agency side of the business for, for 12 years before, before coming to New York Life, and the education that I still needed was, was significant, right? It is, it is a different world, it is a different way of operating, and you need different talent and different people to do it. So I think that's the first and foremost, is make sure you have experts who are able to really get technical at some times and really get strategic at other times and be able to run that gamut. Um, for us, it was a, a unique challenge because New York Life, and, and no matter how far we go with data, right, the way we're set up and we, you know, as a agent distribution uh, network, we have 12,000 agents, and, and we actually believe that consumers should talk to experts when they're making a financial decision that that's significant. We don't want to, to use data and move it. And the problem with saying we're gonna be data centric, people start believing you're gonna to try to automate everything, right? And we're gonna to try to move. And I think what we're trying to do is understand where the data can tell us where that conversation should take place, right? Does an agent always have to start the conversation? You know, if we're talking about insurance, talking about investments, what, what are the signals that we can get? What are the signals that we already have that we don't know we have? We can sort of organize the data to be able to know that. How, do, how are we able to, to draw that out? So that was one of the big challenges because it, some people can view it as a challenge to the entire system of operation. You wanna take away the human element, and that's not at all, I think a lot of these discussions today, that's not at all what I think anybody wants to do or, or even can be successful. You can't take away the human element, you still need that, but what point in time, and how much, and, and, and what's, you know, what signals that is, is, is really important. The amazing thing, that the questions are the same. So if we're introducing a new technology to answer the same questions more efficiently, hopefully, or better, um, th that's kind of how 
you set it up. And um, I was, any technology is only as good as the report you can get out of it. So if the report that you can get out of the platform answers some of the age-old old questions that the, the, the company been asking themselves and just maybe gotten too vague of an answer, if this platform can now get, answer that question more efficiently, you're not introducing anything br brand new. You're going back to someone saying, here's, here's a, new, a new way to answer that question you always had. Yeah, we're, try we're trying to challenge, I mean, uh, this may be more narrow, but maybe there are comparisons other people can make across their businesses. We're trying to challenge the oldest adage that may exist in, in, in our industry, which is, you know, life insurance is sold, not bought, right? That, that life insurance as a commodity is, if you don't have an agent telling you you need it, you won't know you need it. Well, that, that's not the case anymore. In every business, in every industry, people are doing research themselves. They're getting to the point, and, and we're getting some of those signals. So how do we create an ecosystem where the data helps us, you know, life, in, life insurance can be sold and bought, right? Like, how do we right. able to add that part onto it and make it easier um, for our agents to share with them more information to make that selling process uh, easier? No, it's interesting. So, so you, 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 today, earlier, we heard uh, Columbia Sportswear that was going very focused to utilizing data to identify where their audiences are, changing their whole buying habits. Yeah, I think Maud Gert is my new favorite person. Yeah, isn't she's, she great? She's phenomenal. <laughs> I forgot what the poem was, but something, something in advertise. Uh, <laughs> early to bed, early to rise, and spend your money in advertise, or something <laughs> like that. Uh, my own version of it. So, but in general, you know, you have a lot of marketers okay. that are out there trying to use data. They're trying to figure it out. Some are doing things right. Some are doing things wrong. And who knows if it's actually wrong? Maybe later it will, it will uh, you know, turn out to be right. But what are the things that marketers need to do to make data data work for them so that, um, you know, it, it's it's living up to its promise? You know, what molds need to be broken? Babies, I, I think uh, expectation, like, I keep going back to the same point because how important it is, is baby steps. I think the opportunity is amazing and it, it sounds exciting to boil the ocean because of everything potentially that could happen, but nothing will happen if you can't prove it out fairly quickly because it is a new investment. It's something that was not there before. So you need to be realistic about it first and, and prove out that this thing can pay for itself. And after that, you can, you can take those kind of strategic elements or opportunities and, and, and run with them. So what are the uh, KPIs that a management team should look at when they're implementing a data project? What are the things to say, hey, this is successful for us or this isn't working? You know, what are those KPIs <coughs> that they need to look at? I mean, oh, go ahead. You want to go? I was going to just to, just to start, Oleg can definitely has, has a lot more experience across multiple clients. I, I think to a certain extent, I don't want to undersell the importance of what Oleg just said, which is, if you know you're wasting money, if you know, right, if, if you know there's, you're not doing things perfectly, right, the, you know, the biggest KPI, or the biggest, uh, whether you call it a KPI or not, it's, it's not a metric, but the, the biggest piece is, am I doing, is it better than what I'm doing, right? Is it, is it the, is the value there, right? Am I, am I stopping wasting money? Am I, um, am I able to talk to my audience? Am I able to see who's interested in my products more, right? You have those signals. Right? Am I driving more people to the site, site personalization? So different sides of the business um, are, are going to have different KPIs. And part of those KPIs, and I think, again, someone said it in the panel before, let's not neglect the brand experience. Right? Just so, so the DMP and some of this data technology is going to actually, for us at least, right, it's going to make that site side personalization better. We're going to see, it's going to make the content um, better in terms of what we serve up and how long they stay with that experience. And that by itself, especially in a business like ours where there, it's not a direct business for the most part. We do have a, a direct arm, but for the most part, it's, it's not a direct business. We can't judge and see those sales. Typically, it's four to six months even after meeting with an agent. It's a long process, right? So we have to have those KPIs much more upper funnel and be able to make those connections um, lower down the chain. I mean, again, because I, sp I speak for, for, for the media part, part of the overall strategy, um, how much did we invest yesterday, and what, what did we get out of it based on the KPIs set by the, by, by the strategy team, and how much did we invest and what kind of KPIs we got out of it today, provided KPIs didn't change. Sure. So actually math is fairly straightforward. Um, did this additional uh, cost uh, that went on top of our CPM that cut a, potentially took away from working media dollar uh, drive better performance? Because to me, 
and we, we have a lot of discussions, what is a working media dollar, right? And to me, uh, paying for a DMP is part of working media because it works harder to better define what people you want to show an ad to. And since media is the most expensive piece of the entire kind of daisy chain, it's not the ad server, it's not the DMP, it's not the vilification platform, it's not what they pay us to do this whole thing. Uh, it's the actual media that, uh, that, that they invest. So if we can save a couple of points on the shave of a couple of points on that, then it totally pays for itself. Interesting. So, so, so many times what happens inside of companies is that they're focused on hitting these KPIs or hitting these different metrics that they lose sight of the, the bigger picture. You know, inside of your experience at New York Life, you know, what are some of the things that leaders often miss when they're, you know, striving to implement a data project, but they're also only looking to hit these certain KPIs? What are the mistakes that, that have been made, or, and, and what experience did New York Life have? What mistakes did you make, or did it just go so well that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think for, for us, I'll probably have to get back to you on. on Oleg's on, like, no, it didn't on, go on, so on well. More that. I mean, we have. So nothing's we, perfect. Nothing's happened yet, right? So we're, we're still, I mean, in, in full disclosure, we're still in the you know, contract stage. So we don't actually haven't acquired it yet, but we've had all sort of the approvals, and you know, we, you know, everyone loves the procurement process. So, um, but. So, so we'll let you know sort of what happens there. I think, I think what you miss is, as you said, sort of that narrow vision, right? Like if, mm -hmm. if, if you don't define success before early on, if you don't provide all the use cases across the entire business, then you don't know what to measure against. And I think that's the, the worst case scenario is trying to prove it after the fact, because now you're trying, to, you're, you're trying to take metrics and then prove that it was worth it without having people agree um, to it. And we, unfortunately or fortunately, we're a very consensus-driven company. Um, and, and we need to make sure that those things are set uh, and the goals are set beforehand and the stakeholders are set beforehand to be able to say, all right, now this first three months, as Oleg said, right, what's the first three months? What is the next six months? We've actually phased out the capabilities. We've actually, in, in our plan already, we've roadmapped and said, all right, first three months, we want to focus on the media and some of those first easy audience pieces. In fact, mostly we'll do it with third party. Um, data, and then we want to start moving in our first party data and, and, and getting that activated, and then we're going to start to connect it to CRM and, and a data lake and all the other pieces of, of the, um, you know, the ad tech and other technology that we have across the company. You can't do it all at once, because you'll just get mired in, in, in all the back and forth. You have to just pick sort of as you go, and I think that's, you know, if you have sort of that, you know, either narrow view or too wide a view, uh, that's, that's what we miss. I think that's what you can you can trip yourself up over. I think with clients that we went through a lot of it and we launched and it's been a, a year or so of, of, of running platforms, it's reminding uh, them because in the beginning, early on, because it's such an exciting topic, a lot of people from all the way from executive down are involved because it is a fun topic to talk about. It's something that they hear in the press all the time. Everybody's involved. Then we go through evaluation, then we launch, then for six months it's basically teams working on implementation, launching campaigns, and more senior people kind of go do other things. Right. Then six months later, procurement comes, <laughs> comes back and says, hey, you've, we've been paying for this thing, is it worth it? And all of a sudden, executives come back into it, okay, prove it, show, show us. So a lot of times you have to remind them why this was a good idea in the first place, and then hopefully by that time you have some results to show that it actually worked. It's interesting. Um, do, do you find, in, obviously, in other clients that you have, do you find that there are clients that have actually, uh, that data has, has not helped this cir cir circumstance, that data has, has had a negative result? Absolutely. Uh, it's, and th a lot of it, that's why it is, uh, try, tr a lot of it is testing uh, and, and trying what works, what doesn't work. Because just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. And we talk about this uh, with Natan a lot. They sit on a ton of first party data. We don't need all of it, right? right? There's a very specific KPIs in the marketing side that we have and figuring out what data we should actually be using. So instead of trying to onboard absolutely everything and trying to throw that stuff against the wall, because that happens and then sometimes just not worth it. Because a lot of the times we do need to answer the question, is it worth it, right? Broadcasting is it's still worth it. If that's your goal, if you want, if you want broad reach and not not very expensive broad reach, broadcasting is great. Um, you don't want to go on completely other side of the spectrum just by creating these perfect tight little segments with three people in each segment. A lot of work that goes into that will not pay off. Mm -hmm. So, kind of finding that sweet spot and and and, and try and trying that, you will make mistakes, and you should be okay with that. You should be comfortable with that. So, so what's next? What, where 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 is this going? What's next with data? 
well, for the time. We get to we'll use launch it. Launch it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To, <laughs> I'm excited. No, we, 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 we get to, I think, start to, to, to play around a little bit. I think yeah. that's the, um, the biggest thing. I think, you know, we, we, we work in a business or, our, you know, we sell 300,000 policies a year. When we talk about our life insurance side, and we call that a fantastic year. We've, you know, as a company, we've been um, very successful for, for a very long time. Um, it's, you know, when I was working in the, I like to say this all the time, but we were working with, on Subway restaurants, we have to drive 30 million people into our store every month. Like, that's, that's a lot of people, right? So here, we sell 300,000. It's a much more narrower audience pool that you're working with, and right? So you either have to grow that, grow that pool a little bit more or start to move to that four to six month sales cycle mm -hmm. up. So you can start to play around with tests where you can start to have different goals, right? Where you're either trying to widen that pool or you're trying to, Take people who've already engaged with you, right, on your site, look at content, and see if you can shorten that sales cycle. Um, be able to give the agents right now, when we, you know, currently our, our current systems, when we give agents leads, um, when they, you know, people sign up on the website, they want to talk to an agent. All that goes to the agent is sort of a masked phone number, right, and they sort of call and respond and, and see if they got in touch with someone. What if we can pass along, right, all the information they put in, right? Who, who they're looking to protect, why they're, you know, why they're, why they're purchasing it, what, you know, the, the, the amounts that they're looking to talk about, the products, all those other pieces from research they've done already, we can start to share that information. And it's, 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 it, the possibilities are endless. It's really focusing on, uh, but I'm, I, I personally, I'm just excited to play. So, uh, well, with that, I mean, uh, if there are no more questions, I'll uh, say thank you very much, guys, for uh, the time on the panel, and I appreciate it. No, no worries. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Thanks.